G'day mates, in today's video I'm going to be covering my perfect wish list for chapter 3 season 2. What do I think would be the best weapons in Fortnite? Do I want spazzers coming back? Do I want the SMG nerfed? Do I want snipers coming back? What mobility items would be the best? Mythics, I'm covering absolutely everything that I want in the game in chapter 3 season 2. Let's see if you guys agree, it's going to be a long one so sit back, enjoy and let's just jump into it. I'm not going to start off with my usual disclaimer about, you know, competitive metas and being fun and then keeping the game fun for public matches because I already put that in my video, How to Fix Fortnite, and I'll sum that up for you very quickly if you didn't watch it. Basically, I want the game to keep, you know, the spray meta and the metas that public matches are finding fun, that casuals are enjoying because it's not as sweaty in public matches, but then have a very big loot split for competitive like Arena, make it a proper ranked game mode that is worth grinding in tournaments and have that be a more shotgun heavy meta. So you still keep you know all the casuals and content creators happy who are loving the current spray meta because whether you are a casual and not enjoying it i myself personally don't enjoy playing it the numbers are there to support it that the game is looking really really good right now i'd argue a lot of that is still due to the map and the crazy amount of effort that's being put into the game but there are is a lot of evidence to show that a lot of casuals do like the spray meta not all of them but if epic is seeing the fact the spray meta is bringing a lot of players back to the game and is making the game healthy leave that in public matches and then in the arena and tournament playlist Focus on a more pump and shotgun heavy meta because that is clearly what the competitive fans or at least majority of them want back in the game. So I'm not going to go and do a long rant on making competitive fun again because right now competitive with the map, the new heals, the way the mobility is working actually looks really, really good and really exciting. But it's hard to tell whether it would be very fun if you took out the SMGs and made it a more shotgun heavy meta because the SMGs are having such a massive impact on competitive. So I'll jump in talking about what weapons I want, what I think the best shotguns will be, the best AI mobility but i wanted to cover that at the start i want a big split in the loop pool between public and arena because that is what i think will make the game thrive and will finally make both groups casuals and competitors happy in the same game at the same time and then if you can pick whatever you want do you want to spray and have all the crazy weapons jump into pubs if you want to play a bit sweatier you want to have a bit more of a low-key meta still fun though that prioritizes shotgun jump in competitive we can really finally make everyone happy Let's talk about what shotguns I think would be the best in the game right now because shotgun meta has the biggest impact on a season as we've just seen. Depending on how strong the shotguns are and what shotguns are in the game, it is going to have the biggest impact on how people play the season. My favorite meta, and I would love to see it, would be striker pump shotgun, tag shotgun, charge shotgun, and maybe a like dragon's breath or double barrel shotgun that, you know, is very, very high accuracy reliant, but you only get one or two shots to do really good damage at a very close range. The first three though, Striker, tack, charge, I think would be phenomenal for the game. And hear me out. I know that doesn't have the spaz, that doesn't have the pump. Again, I really am not a huge fan of one pumping. If it came back to the game, if they brought out a spaz or they adjusted the striker pump so it was able to one pump, I wouldn't be incredibly upset. Competitive would be crazy to watch people hitting one pump clutches again. The montages would be insane. Creative is good fun. But I just think that people forget how annoying one pumping is with bailouts. You have a player that, you know, is not the best. You have them very, very low. You go for an edit, you hold a good angle, but they just manage to hit that ridiculous flick pump or that one shot when you jump in their box and they clear you out and that's it, your game is done. Yes, you could argue that is skillful, but there's a lot of times I guarantee you've complained about one pumping, you've just forgot about it. Plus, I don't think the way to fix shotguns is to make them stronger at the moment because the issue is we need to nerf the SMGs. And I'll touch on that in a little bit, but the SMGs are too strong right now. They're killing people too fast. To counter that, you don't add another weapon that kills people even faster because then everyone's going to die in 0.2 seconds and the fights are going to be over like instantly. It's not going to be fun. We need to nerf the SMG because the striker pump shotgun is actually, in my opinion, a really balanced, really strong shotgun. It feels fluid to use. It shoots quickly. Yes, the second shot is delayed, but I would argue that a skillful shotgun shouldn't be shot twice in a row. You should be editing, shooting, closing the edit, or if you're in the box, you edit, you shoot, and you switch to an AR and SMG, and then you follow up. And when the SMG doesn't bleed through and just absolutely destroy you i feel like that would be a really really skillful meta but what i want is like a chapter 2 season 5 meta where even better with the striker pump shotgun it's balanced to different play styles you want to go for that edit piece control kind of style with the ability to jump in but you need to hit your shot striker pump shotgun 
shotgun. You want to play really aggressive, jump in the box and really put that high fire rate? Tack shotgun. You want to play a bit more defensive. You want to hit harder than what you can with a striker pump. You want to be able to one pump someone, but you've got to time that shot and you've got to hit it perfectly. Then you run the charge. And I would love to see them bring side grading back into the game. So those three play styles and weapons are really balanced and you can side grade between any of them. So you always get to play the play style you want. Or even better yet for a competitive meta, depending on where you are in the game, one shotgun is better than the other. You find a, a striker on spawn. All right, I'm confident with this. I'm going to hit some shots. I'm going to take them out. But now I'm getting into end game. I want to hold some angles and I want to get that really big shock, um, shotgun shot in the tarps. I'm going to switch to a charge shotgun. You side grade to a charge and there you go. I loved a meta where I went to fight someone and I was like, all right, let's see what they got. Oh, they got a charge shotgun. And I played differently or they have a tack shot. Like I'm going to be careful here. I'm going to back it up. I love that really in-depth play style of depending on what shotgun they have, I need to play the fight differently. And if you balance those three shotguns, they are three very, very different shotguns. I wasn't a huge fan of the lever shotgun rewarding hitting body shots over headshots is really strange for me you should always reward hitting a headshot for max damage rather than hitting more consistent body shots so i think having what was essentially the chapter 2 season 5 meta but replace the lever with striker would be really good you would have to tone up and down the damage of each weapon accordingly maybe the charge couldn't actually 200 pump it could only hit really hard maybe the tack shotgun needs to hit a little bit harder because it has been really weak and really inconsistent in previous seasons but i think if we went back to more of an old tack i think this could be a really really good meta i personally love dragon shotgun and like a double barrel mostly dragon shotgun because it's a entirely different play style and again based on someone having that weapon or you having that weapon you have to play completely differently and i think it's a really fun like kind of flex item that back when it was in the game not many people ran wavy jacob and centered were really well known for pulling it out in competitive but most people didn't but in arena it was kind of a fun item to throw around and, and mix it and up there i would run attack and the dragon shotgun and i would bait people into thinking i had attack so they play really confidently and then i'd hit him with the dragon shotgun and it was so much fun i love that season i think chapter 2 season 5 is one of the most underrated seasons and i'd love to see a shotgun meta come back like that one now let's talk ARs and this one specifically is going to revolve around recoil versus bloom. MK7 introduced a high recoil element to Fortnite we've never seen before. Rather than having bloom, which again if you guys don't know is when you shoot, the game kind of picks where the bullet goes around the cursor and the more you shoot, the more that spreads out except for first shot accuracy which hits exactly where your cursor is. We now have recoil where the gun kicks back like a real gun in real life and if you control that your bullets shoot way more accurately. I like that. I think recoil adds a very skillful element to the game. I've talked about it for a while now recoil is something you can practice for and you can get very good at controlling compared to bloom which is an element of luck that you get better at minimizing the problem is right now it is recoil for babies it is so easy just to pull down your mouse or pull down the stick a little bit and you can almost perfectly control the recoil at very long range pick up a game like apex legends or god forbid a game like rust where the recoil is insane and you'll see how recoil probably should get closer to it. i don't want to go all the way down the lines of lines of rust but i think other games like apex are a bit closer to where if you have really good aim really good control you put out crazy damage but you need to work for that you need to get skillful to be able to hit those shots and be able to consistently control your recoil not at the moment where it's just pulling down i don't like that so i do want to see the mk7 stay in the game i want to see its damage toned down especially its fire rate i don't like shots going through builds i do not like bleed damage but i think it needs to be toned up with the recoil to make it a lot harder to control so that if you are skillful and you do control it you get the damage output that's worth it because no one is running the ranger because it just does not make sense i think the ranger is actually a a decent AR that is very, very skillful and has a good place in the meta if you tone down the MK7. Especially with a diverse shotgun meta like I talked about, you might not run the Ranger AR unless you have attack shotgun because if you have to follow up with the Ranger AR in the box, it's not consistent enough. You can't spray with it. So maybe you have to run an SMG that hopefully will be nerfed. Like you can see how it adds a bit more of a, a diverse loophole when you have the two ARs very balanced where right now you only run the Ranger until you get an MK7. It's just a terrible, terrible AR are in comparison to the mk7 i really like infantry in the loot pool i think infantry is a fantastic weapon but it would find itself very close to the ranger because the slow fire rate high damage it basically is the same thing anyway uh other weapons like the the, the submachine gun ar the tactical ar it could be cool to bring it back because it has a different uh, amount of ammo pool but if we're just going to stick to having mk7 ranger in the game i think it could be a very very good meta if you make the mk7 a bit weaker turn up the recoil and maybe i don't think make the ranger strong 
stronger, maybe make it a bit better hip firing so you can use it a bit more versatile instead of just having, you know, the MK7 that does everything better. But I still think it's a decent AR meta as long as the MK7 gets nerfed a bit. All right, SMGs, the Stinger SMG. Do I want it taken out of the game? No. Do I want it heavily nerfed? Yes, especially in competitive. I still argue even in public matches, spray metas just aren't that fun, or at least not this strong. P90s in the past have been plenty powerful. If someone gets a P90 and they have good aim and they want to play aggressive, they jump out, they catch you off guard, and they get a good elim. I think P90s were at a perfect point where spray was still strong, just not as strong as it currently is. The stinger is way too powerful. And the two main reasons are the fire rate, the fact that bullets bleed through walls and do damage through walls, or they just shred you before you can even react, especially Especially if you're a 28 year old boomer like me i'm not reacting in time to how much damage those things put out very quickly but also it is the clip size the fact that you can spray like 15 bullets into a wall break two walls break into the box and still have enough bullets to shoot them in the head and take them out also the range on it the fact that it functions almost like an ar when i play arena when i play pubs i run smg shotgun spider-man and two meds because the spider-man gets me close enough where the stinger smg is going to obliterate them i don't need to run an AR and that is an issue. It should not do so much damage and be so accurate at range. It needs way more damage fall off and I know other people like Cypher PK have talked in the scene about a better way to balance the SMG is to make it feel a bit more like the machine pistol. Having a weapon that feels truly like an SMG. It does good damage at close range. It has a decent fire rate to break builds. The, the bullets don't go through the walls as much but if you try to shoot it over you know 20 meters or again like 30 40 feet for my Americans it doesn't do as much damage and I think that is a far far better way to balance the SMG. I don't want it completely removed from the game, but also I feel like when you have like P90 or an SMG in the meta and the shotgun's really strong, pulling out the SMG and, and surprising people is a really, really good way to play the game. Talking about chapter two, season five, during that meta, quite often I would, you know, just pull out the SMG and kind of surprise someone by spraying through a wall, getting close to them and get, putting out some good damage. But when everyone, when everyone is just using SMGs to jump in, go crazy and competitive, people are running ARs and SMGs, SMGs, it's or it's just the common play style and I don't think that is the way that Fortnite should be played in my opinion at least in competitive I just don't really enjoy it I think there's far less skill diversity when it comes to a spray meta just finding out when to time to spray to run through walls and just keep shooting and never let go is nowhere near as skillful as being able to piece someone up build edit go for your shot and I still think the skill ceiling is what got Fortnite to this point even casuals I feel like really get into this game when you start to try to improve and get better if, if I'm completely wrong on that one if epic really wants to stick to a spray meta i think it should stay in public matches and should stay out of competitive now let's talk mobility my favorite mobility in the game two items that should never be taken out of fortnite is bouncers and launch pads they're both so skillful everyone can get them they function as a trap so you can carry them if you get them on spawn i just think they are phenomenal very very skilled mobility use them well they are very powerful you can take high ground get front side you can rotate you can get away from players use them terribly and you're going to get beamed and you're going to get punished and that is what good mobility is if you use it properly it is very strong but if you use it wrong it is very weak now let's talk about the other forms of mobility carryable mobility because i don't think that is enough mobility in the game a lot of people don't realize because the Spider-Man has been heavily carrying this season with mobility, the changes to how end games work where zones pull further and last longer is going to be brutal without some kind of very strong carryable mobility, which isn't the worst thing. P players having to go for refreshes a lot end game and maybe games don't get to ninth zone in competitive might not be the end of the world. I would love to see players play a bit more aggressive in end game because they have less mobility. So they have to jump in for refreshes because they run out of mats. But I do think we need some kind of strong mobility. Let's come of take out the ones that i don't think are that great firstly spider-man almost definitely is going to go this season when bugle turns into a volcano like a lot of people are expecting usually the collaborations like that only last one season so spider-man is almost definitely going to be gone and it's going to leave a big hole in the heart of many people myself included pubs and arena zipping around and taking a lot of fights has been very fun but at the same time it has led to a lot of third parties a lot of issues and a lot of people saying that in especially competitive if you don't have a spider-man there's just no point playing because you can't place it's not that ridiculous but it is still an issue i also want to move away from the the idea of having set really strong mobility in locations that you guaranteed get because that's what's going to let people just abuse running it and not learning how to play other aspects of the game because they're guaranteed to get it every game rather than like with carryable mobility where sometimes you get lucky and you get it so you can play to it but you don't get it every single time let's tick off some of the 
carry mobility that I don't want. Shockwaves. I do not want shockwaves in the game. Firstly, the amount of lag that breaking the builds creates in endgame and competitive is a nightmare. People don't realize that when everyone was breaking the builds and flying across the zone, that is always creating a lot of the endgame hitches in the server and a lot of the lag. So bringing back shockwaves would do that. Also, putting them in team game metas like duos and trios is a nightmare because you have to do all these weird, cheesy strats to try to make them work like group mobility and they're just not designed for that. I would love potentially what is essentially a buffed impulse grenade or a nerfed shockwave where it is just a shockwave that doesn't break build. So it still sends you as far, but you don't take damage because impulse grenades just didn't send you far enough and the fall damage really ruined them. Shockwaves that didn't uh, didn't break builds would stop that server lag issue. It also stopped the issue of people shockwaving out of their box. Like how many times were you rotating an end game in those zones? You're about to get into a good spot. Someone flies through your builds. You drop into an enemy's box and you get one pumped and you're just like, there is no way I could have countered that. There was no skill in that. So having a not break builds would help the lag and would also help that issue. And the no fall damage would also help it still be a strong item and the distance would help you rotate. There would be issues of using it to take high ground by just shockwaving up and shockwaving them off or using it from height to shockwave people down out, which isn't the end of the world. I still think that isn't the worst item in the game. I think that could be a cool one to play around with. Um, Crash pads, I'm not a huge fan of. The same thing with the shockwave. They break a lot of builds, which creates a lot of lag. And like shockwaves, you can use them to like kind of cheesily exploit into people's boxes. The, sh the crash pads were the most broken thing ever. You would just stand on top of someone's one by one, build a ramp, throw the crash pad at the bottom of the ramp. It would break the floor and cone. You'd fall in, you'd 50-50 them. Or you'd run up to a corner of a box, throw it, bounce into their thing, 50-50 them. It just wasn't a skillful version of the game. Despite it being a version of the game that I'm quite good at, because when you take building and editing out and leave just pure aim, I am actually as a player buffed so i don't want you guys to think i'm arguing for a meta that i think will make me better quite a lot of these things that i'm arguing to get taken out of the game or not to come back are actually hurting me as a player but i don't think they're good for the game because they are usually uh, able to kind of you know make up for one of the weaknesses that you should develop as a player whether it be good piece control or good editing good positioning and they kind of just throw that out the window so i don't want crash pads in the game rifter goes i feel like with how good people's aim is these days rifter goes wouldn't be as strong you would get beams pretty heavily if you try to use them in end game but i think they're very annoying especially in early and mid game fights you get someone super low not low enough where you can beam them out of the sky they rift you have to hit the rift you run you chase they hit the ground they jump on a launch pad they run they go to another rift on the map they get in a car like it just becomes this whole thing that i just don't think is very healthy for the game shadow bombs i think could be quite good especially in duos because they're quite skillful you have to use them properly to bounce around to actually get the maximum effect out of them you can't shoot while using them you're very vulnerable to getting shot or boxed up yourself you can't use them to just take high ground for free they take a lot of skill if you use it to take high ground using it in a duo meta would mean that you'd have to carry at least two of them one for you one for your teammate which balances them out a lot more again i do think out of the carryable mobility options there is one of the best ones i think the best carryable mobility though and i have no clue why epic took it out so fast is the inflatable the inflatable is a great item the one issue the one unbalanced part of it is the fact that the audio on it is very weak where you can jump out of it and just one pump people in the head but compared to other mobility items that is not that big of an issue for how balanced it is one shot and it breaks and you take full damage if you're not good with it you're going to bounce all over the place and not go to where you want to go everyone can get it you have to carry it so it takes up an item slot it is a back bling so you can see if your enemy has it i just think it was a fantastic item it was really fun for skill shots it was fun for casuals it was just a bit memey it just felt it felt like fortnite bouncing around as a giant inflatable cow i just i have no clue why they took out such a great item so soon so i would love to potentially see the inflatable come back so maybe inflatable shadow bombs uh launch pads and bounces i think that would be a really really good mobility meta for fortnite in its current state i forgot some of the other items in there but those are the main ones that i hear people bring up whenever we talk about mobility and i just i don't think the other ones would fit that well right now on the topic of mobility i want to talk about vehicles again just talking on fun balanced vehicles i have zero clue why the hoverboard has not come back to the game it is really fun for casuals it's really good for trick shots and memeing around it is good for competitive because if you use it well you can rotate early but you're gonna get beamed if you use it poorly the only time we have ever seen the hoverboard be an issue is when you had sh uh shield bubbles you could throw on them that was the only time but without shield bubbles the hoverboard is one of the best items in the game and needs to come back also 
also quad crashing. They brought them back, but then they nerfed the flying aspect, which again, I think is a really balanced, good form of mobility. If you use it wrong, you're going to get beamed. It's going to get exploded. You're going to die to fall damage. But if you use it properly, you can rotate early and get ahead of zone. And it's quite a skillful way to rotate. The vehicles we currently have with the chonker tires are very good. And I think people are finally coming around and learning how to box up the vehicles for rotates, even on half half and even rotating zones. I think the semi trucks actually need to be nerfed. And I know that sounds hilarious for me to say, but if you've watched any clips of pros using the semi trucks end game, because they break builds when you get even like one foot away from them and then accelerate, you can just mow people down, run through their builds, hit them out in the zone, do a hundred damage. They are very, very broken in end game and maybe need to be adjusted. But overall, the rest of the vehicles, especially when you get the chonker tires are quite strong. But I just think quad crasher and the hoverboards are so much better. The only downside being a duo meta, you need to get two hoverboards, which I understand is a bit of an issue, but I still think they should be in the game. Uh, we are going to potentially get the vehicle modding I talked about in yesterday's video. So if we have armored tank turret vehicles driving through end game, that is going to be a massive issue. So I hope that doesn't make it into competitive. As for the ballers, the ballers with the current weapons and the ARs and the SMGs would get obliterated very quickly, but I still don't think they're a good addition to the game. They're still very cheesy. It still plays into the idea, like I said, with the Spider-Man that if you drop at a certain location for them and you're guaranteed them, it means you're just not working on any of your weaknesses as a player and you're just abusing them to get you through early and mid game. So I think if we got the hoverboard back with the quad crashes and still the existing vehicles with chonker tires, I think that'd make up for a lot of really good early and mid game mobility as far as vehicles go. I do want more permanent mobility around the map as well. Like the guys as we've seen in the water seasons. Again, we now have rifts permanently around the map, which I think are quite good, especially on the edges. But I'd love to see some more things like geysers in different locations. And I know they create issues for end game. So Epics needs to stick to the way they've done with like the slipstreams where they turn them off when it gets towards end game. But I'd really like to see more of that permanent mobility around the map to let skillful rotators and people who are smart base up next to them and then use them for the next rotates. And for pubs and arena, when you have that psychopath kid who thinks that he is phase sway fighting you in storm, you can now actually make it to zone if you know where this permanent mobility is. Now, I've talked about Mythics for a while and we just got Covert Cavern come back and I love the Vault. I kind of like the Mythic isn't in competitive. I think that's a cool way to have these Vault drops that are really fun, but I still think it'd be fun to add some Mythics that aren't weapons. I've been saying this for the longest time. Mythics are quite boring when you make them just an upgraded, higher damage version of a weapon that already exists. Make them something completely different. And you guys have always thrown crazy ideas at me and this is the part of the equation I've never really been able to solve that I'd love Epic to be able to do a better job than me at, but adding some kind of utility items. So I loved like the infinite chug jug. Maybe there's like one rift to go and maybe it's only the rift to go on the map that you get as well. Maybe it's something like a launch pad that has two uses. Maybe it's like one shield bubble. Maybe it's those utility items. And again, obviously those are just examples off the top of my head. Some of those wouldn't be as good for a competitive meta, but you get where I'm going with this. Like we had the chug cannon, something that is completely different and unique. So it's fun to drop out and you want to get your hands on it. Things like the infinite grappler were obviously just a little bit too strong. Maybe the grappler that had the glider pull, I think was more balanced than the regular glider, but I don't want to go back to caddy launcher where one mythic just dictated how the game was to be played. But if you can find good mythics that feel strong and worth going to these POIs, but are very different, it also make arena and pubs more fun. Like, hey guys, let's let's try and get our hands on, on the rift to goes this game. Let's go drop at that new mythic place and get the rift to goes. Like, you see how much more fun that would be than, oh, let's go get the mythic stinger and one of us gets to run it. You know what I mean? I just don't think that are great mythics for the game for pubs or for competitive it just doesn't make them that fun but i love vault drops vault drops are so good covert is one of the best drops we've had in such a long time they're tactical they're fun they're a little bit crazy there's different ways to play them you can camp the vault you camp outside just if you have the disguising aspect they're just really cool but i love like four to five of them on the map so competitively not one person has a huge advantage i would like to point out though out of covert people didn't do as well in fncs as a lot of people people were expecting because obviously you are heavily, heavily contested when you go covert and that's what is so great about them. So adding more to the map might cut that back a little bit, but I think as long as they weren't super, super insanely strong, like you didn't walk away with, again, guaranteed two pads and all the meds you do out of covert, because if you had more of them, you wouldn't get contested as often, but I still think they should be worth the hassle to get them because people are going to want to fight for them. And then for pubs and arena, it's really fun and it would spread people out so they're not all hot dropping one POI, which kills out 
out the lobbies so quickly, especially if they had different fun items. Like I said, I really want to get my hands on the grappler this game, so I'm going to go that vault. It really adds a diversity to where you drop and how you play your drop spots because there's more skill to them, but there is overall a different result when you leave them. You got an entirely different item that changes how you play the game. That's what made Chapter 2, Season 2, and Season 3 for me so playable when it came to arena and pubs because I would pick where I drop based on how I wanted to play the game. I really, really want that to come back to the game. Please bring back more fun mythics and more vault drops. Next up is meds, and this one is usually a pretty boring one. I think the new meds epic added to the game are awesome. I love the shield keg. I love the uh, med mist. I love the guzzle juice. I really just think the meds are a really good spot. I like the way coolers function, where you can have different, you know, you know, you get splashes and guzzle juice, but I think they should be more spread out around the map, kind of like they are near Coney, where there's some near the river, there's not some near the water, there's some out in the open fields. I don't think you should just have them condensed in a one POI like Chonkers, where you're walking away with like 30 splashes as a do. I'd much prefer them be like little safe havens or little ways to get loot around the map if you leave your drop shambles or if you're doing like a split drop. So I really think the meds are in a great spot right now. And honestly, I don't think I'd add anything to them. Maybe just stop putting so many coolers in one location and spread them out a bit. One of the major ones, sniper rifles. I actually quite like snipers in the game. I think they're really exciting. I think they're really fun, but this sniper just isn't it. It's not even the fact that it doesn't do 200 headshot damage. It's how slow the bullets shoot. So they're really, really hard to hit in a meta where there's so many other fun items to carry. I think sniper rifles would have to be getting picked up 0.01% of the time. And any item like that, you either need to adjust it, buff it, or get it out of the loot pool. Because right now it's just clogging up the loot pool and I'm finding five of them on spawn and it's pissing me off. So either buff the sniper so it's fun to use and it's strong or get it out of the game. And I don't think having snipers in competitive is always a bad thing. Or People always talk about getting one-shot headshot sniped as, as this bad luck RNG thing that throws tournaments doesn't belong in games. But if we tone down the MK7 and the AR damage at range and we don't have a strong sniper rifle in the game, people are going to go back to just overpeaking like crazy, holding people forever and there's nothing you can do about it. Snipers in the game adds a bit of fear to players when they're opening windows and going for angles that I think is ultimately very healthy for the game, especially when players can just sit on edge zone right now with really powerful spray weapons and just continually spray. Having sniper rifles to shoot back into that and then put down some pressure, I think would be really healthy for the game. But if you're not going to buff the damage, if they're not going to do 200 headshot, please at least make the bullet shoot quickly so they're a lot easier to hit. Because right now at range, I can literally be shooting at someone with my AR like 200 meters away and I can dodge the bullet. It's so slow like i know when they shoot i can get a bullet off and then step out of the way because the bullet trajectory is that slow a lot of people didn't notice it because they just felt like the, the snipers were terrible and they weren't using them that is why it's not even the fact they don't do as much headshot damage you're just not picking it up because every time you do it's not fun to use because it's so damn slow all right guys i know it was a long one but i hope you enjoyed if you did please chuck a like on it subscribe to the channel if you haven't and i'll see you in the next one